three new Blackmagic cameras, giant inflatable lights, several new cine lenses, a COB light that looks like a spaceship, a scary AI gimbal, a motorcycle rig, and this crazy looking thing. All of this and more in this 2024 Euro Cine Expo recap. So there's one brand that's been making a lot of noise in the past few months, and that's Blackmagic with the release of three new cameras. So the Pixis, which a lot of people have been divided on the 12K Ursa and the 17K Ursa Cine. I don't think the 17K Ursa is at the booth right now, but let's go have a look at what Blackmagic has to offer. So this is the camera that pretty much everyone has been talking about, uh, the Blackmagic Pixis camera. We have it here also with the new EVF mounted on there. So essentially, this is the same camera as the 6K Cinema. It's the same sensor, same frame rate. It's 6K open gate, 30 frames per second. The big difference, of course, to the 6K Cinema is that the Pixis is a box camera. It has metal housing and lots of attachment points for rigging. The 6K Cinema also has more of a proprietary proprietary EVF, whereas the Pixis can be combined with the new Blackmagic EVF that connects over USB-C. So this is kind of more thought to be built out and rigged out, whereas the 6K Cinema is more of like a run and gun camera. And of course, one big thing where like the whole internet or YouTube game um, kind of lost their mind is the fact that there's a screen on the side and it doesn't flip out or anything. But that's again, like thinking of what this camera is meant to be and it's meant to be rigged out and this screen is not meant to be to view your image on really so it's just to change your settings and things like that but to anyone who's worried about this um, screen on the side you can actually lock it right here and then you won't actually accidentally touch any of the settings another really interesting thing about that is if you hold this camera like on a shoulder rig or anything like that, or even if you're just shooting um, handheld stuff like this, kind of like run and gun, which you easily could because this is such a compact camera. The cool thing is you can just switch it over and change your settings like this. Also, if you have it on your shoulder like this, you can just kind of hold it like this and then change your settings. And that's kind of what the uh, idea is with the screen on the side there. So it's not meant to be as a monitor because, you know, honestly, anyone using this camera is gonna use an external monitor to view their image on and not this on the side here. So this is Blackmagic's 12K Ursa Cinema camera, which at the moment is Blackmagic's highest end camera. And we also have the new EVF on here. And the cool thing about this camera, if you open this up right here, you have the M2 um, media module in here. And this essentially is eight terabytes of internal storage in your camera. That is the option to capture every single resolution the camera offer, yep. 12K, 8K or 4K with the in-camera sensor scaling, so yeah. no crop. This 12K Ursus Cine has a new large format sensor. It shoots open gate and has 16 stops of dynamic range in comparison to the 14 stops of the Ursa Mini Pro. This kit with the new EVF comes in at about $16,500, which is relatively affordable in comparison to some competitors. It'll be ready probably in a month or two. Uh, we're still finalizing a few, few things. Unfortunately, they did not have the upcoming 17K Ursus Cine at the booth, but a lot of people have been going crazy over it. This camera is still under development and not available yet, but it's a massive 65mm cinema camera. The sensor has the ability to capture larger than IMAX resolutions. So a digital 65mm sensor that shoots 17K is kind of like a digital version of IMAX. There's still no info on an exact price or a release date, but this thing is going to be wild. Next, we had a look at the Nanlite booth where they were demonstrating their new technology on how to clean their lights. It's just demonstrating light. the lights is taking a shower so you don't have to worry it get dye or not. So the IP rating for the 900C is IP55. The Evo 1200 is IP54 and the rest is IP55. Nanlite also recently released the new FC60, FC120 and FC500 light. They are a more budget option to the Forza 60, 120 and 500. The big differences are the Forzas are a little bit smaller, better build quality and have a few extra functions. But they added one thing to the FCs which I personally love and that is USB-C power delivery. Of course, we can't leave the Nanlite booth without talking about the Pavo Slims. So all the design is for speed. So basically, the softbox can be attached like this. So, and you can pack it like this. So when you grab out from your, from your case and then go on stand and just pop it up, boom, you have a soft light. And then you got different mounting points so you can just like adjust the angle by yourself. So this is 0% right now. And I'm going to turn it all the way up. 
200. So we're here at the DZO booth and they have the three new Pavo two times anamorphic lenses, but also the three new Arles Cine Prime lenses. So let's go have a look. DZO recently introduced these brand new Arles Cine Prime lenses. The set includes a 25, 50, 75 and 100 millimeter. They are all T1.4, so much faster in comparison to the T2.1 or T2.8 of the Vespids and supposedly much sharper as well. The Vespids are, however, $700 cheaper and also a bit lighter. So if you're on a budget or you have a small gimbal, the Vespids will suit you better. If you want the best image quality, the Arles are the way to go. So this is a 25 at T1.4. This is the 100 millimeter 1.4. So this is the 50 millimeter at T1.4. They definitely look really nice on like full open at uh, T1.4. Now, unfortunately, they didn't have the new two times anamorphic Pavos at the booth, but basically DZO added three new lenses to the six lens kit that they have. A 65 millimeter macro lens, a 135 and a 180 millimeter. The 65 millimeter is really unique because as far as I know, it's the world's closest focusing two times anamorphic lens with a minimum focus distance of 36.6 centimeters. All right, next on the list is Nisi with their new Athena lenses. They already had five lenses in this set, a 14 millimeter, a 25, 35, 50, and 85 millimeter. But now they've added a 18 millimeter T2.2, a 40 millimeter T1.9, and a 135 millimeter T2.2. So here we have like pretty much the whole lineup except for the 18 millimeter is missing. And you can see they're all like the same size throughout the entire focal range except for the 135, which is a little bit bigger, but still that makes it really easy to just like balance or switch lenses if you need to and not have to rebalance your rig. I will be testing out these lenses on the channel very soon, but so far from what I've heard, they have a very clean look and are very high quality for a tighter budget. Also, Siri has some new interesting cine glass for Super 35 sensors. The Nightwalker series are a 16, 24, 35, 55, and 75 millimeter set that are all an impressive T1.2. They're all pretty equal in size and fairly similar in weight. While doing a quick test on the Expo, I noticed some interesting characteristics like this cat eye bokeh on the edges of the 75 millimeter and a very strong rainbow flaring on the 16 millimeter wide open. So we just walked past the Godox stand here and um, there's this spaceship looking kind of light and we're gonna try and find out what the hell that is. This is what we call the being light mass 19. So this is basically uh, reflectors for the, our, our new LED lights. So this huge modifier creates parallel beam lighting. It basically turns your light into a laser. It has been specially designed to replicate sunlight over long distances. They had it mounted to a no LED 2400 by which is Godox massive 2400 watt light. A cool feature of this light is that it automatically switches on or off when you attach or detach certain modifiers. Okay, so Mark just told me that we really also need to check out these uh, panels back here. So he's going to talk about them real quick yes. and probably try and sell me one. <laughs> the flex panels are really lightweight and they are also uh, IP65 rating. So they are waterproof and dustproof. And now the new one, but it's not out yet. So this is uh, only a demo. So that one is bicolor. It is 600 watts. The one in RGB is even 800 watts. What I hear from the market as well is that normally when you put a really low intensity, it's still quite bright. But if I put it on 0.1%, you can see it still illuminates, but very little. All right, next, let's have a look at the aperture booth and what's new there. As you can see, there's a big infinity mat there behind me. So I'm excited to find out about that one. Well, this isn't even the biggest thing. So this is the 8x8. It's the biggest one again. 20 by 20. Okay. But didn't fit on the booth, so. <laughs> Aperture's new infinity mats are basically inflatable lights. It's an LED panel and in front of it, you have an inflatable diffusion. Very easy to set up, just plug it into the, the air nozzle and then it will inflate, this is like in, within 30 seconds. So here basically, here you can see it, see it in the works. So you have an air cushion, then you have the LEDs here. So it's all Velcro attached. And then the cool thing also about this one, the bigger ones, is you can, for surface, you can swap the pixels out. So if one uh, pixel is broken, especially with the bigger ones, if you have 16 pixels, one is broken, you can easily swap it out for a new one if you need, just like you're, if you're swapping out the power cable. Aperture already had a set of eight infinity bars, but now they also released a four set. The lights are exactly the same, only the configuration of the kit is different. You get a nice Peli case and a bunch of accessories like this power brick that can power up to eight of the large four foot infinity bars. And then you only have to plug in one 
and then the whole sequence get powered. That's good. The most cool thing about the Infinity Bars itself, it's, it's, it's a bar, so it's flat, it's not round, which makes that you can sort of like easily, sort of like seamlessly can attach uh -huh. these lights all together in either squares or triangles or, or can infer them like this or even make it into sort of like almost a panel. Next, let's look at the new phone gimbal that Jiun announced a few days ago. This thing features AI tracking, so if you make this square gesture, you can activate tracking, which will make the gimbal follow you pretty much wherever it can see you. You can then start and stop recording by hitting it with a peace sign or stop everything with a stop sign. But honestly, the real reason I came to the Jiun booth was to finally answer every YouTuber's question. How do you pronounce it? Uh, we say Xion, but the Chinese say Juin or Zi Yun. Zi Yun. Win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Win? yeah. So no new Sony cameras yet, but they did show the Burano at their booth, which came out in the beginning of the year. Can you tell my audience in two minutes or less why they should buy a Sony Burano? Well, the Burano uh, incorporates the high quality of our Venice line. It's the first of its kind uh, where you have autofocus integrated. So it has AI functions already to recognize people having the focus on eye detection and face detection. Then it's the first of its kind where um, it has got a stabilized sensor. So that's the first camcorder that has got variable ND filter and the sensor stabilization. What about the uh, FX3 Mark II? Oh, well, I can't tell you anything about <laughs> that. On the other side, what are you expecting to be different from the current FX6? Internal NDs. Internal NDs, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> One other interesting booth we came across was the one from Black Tech. Especially this motorcycle rig caught my attention. We are specialized in rigging and camera movements. Pretty there we have special towers. So these towers, you can put them on camera cars. One is broadcast, will go to the Olympics now. Now it's seven meters, but you can make it higher. Two meters, one second. One second. One it goes second, up. two meters. So it goes up and in, in one second it does two meters. The smallest one is this one. Yeah. And you can use it on a motorcycle, for example. Go yeah, through a big hole or something, and you can you can change the the, uh, the hardness of it. So now it's much harder. Then when you open it up, it's getting softer and softer. So when you have an when you drive into a bump, bumpy road yeah, or something, you, it, like a... you have the big shocks off, and it doesn't go on the camera and the head. And we started with the suction cups. Normally it's just the plate. We have an extension, so we can stay from the side and go to the side and it's, it works with under pressure. Now it's, it's tight. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wow, yeah. <laughs> Plop it on it and it goes down. And it's fixed. Where are you based? Munich. You ship internationally? Yes. And just as the show was coming to an end, we ran into this crazy looking thing. So what's the shotgun machine thing? that you have here? Yeah, it's a wooden camera, basically. It's a one megapixel wooden camera with a big, big zoom. So, uh, so optimal ultra 12 times zoom. So uh -huh. it's up to 435 zoom. But there's a camera in here. No, it's an art piece. We do <laughs> lens control, so this is uh. our product. <laughs> But it's an eye catcher, so it's yeah, I definitely, yeah, well, that, I definitely, see, that works. worked, yeah. Okay, so this is your product. Exactly. We do lens control, we do wireless lens control, so we can move the lens. Different kind of motors, different kind of uh, hand units we do, and there's different software where you can control the lens, so it's for the first, first assistant camera, basically. All right, that's it for the recap video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.